Welcome Club Familia. The winter release is here. Uh, we just finished up a beautiful 2023 harvest season. As you can see the beautiful fall colors behind us. I'm here with our winemaker James McPhail and my brother Mike and we're here to discuss the first time ever we're bringing a winter release to you club members. So we have two exceptional wines. Uh, some of you have never had access to them and this is a perfect opportunity the 2023 holiday season we're bringing them to your doorstep and we hope that you're able to put them on your holiday table and enjoy them and with that we'd like to talk about them uh, there are two wines that i actually as we develop this long process with james can attest we've added different um, vineyard designates over the years um, it's really important for us as growers to really um, allow you club familiar members to see our different vineyards and taste the terroir and elements of them. And so Katerina, uh, which was 2020 was our first release, and this is the 2021. I think it's a great opportunity for us to talk about Katerina because it plays such an amazing part of our history of San Giacomo, what it means from, it was a pear orchard at one time, it was a great vineyard planted in 1982, and now it's been replanted a couple different times with different clones. And so with that, I think we'll lead off. I'm going to talk to my brother, Mike, just talk about the history of Katarina and the, kind of what it means to our family. So, Mike. Sure. No, Katarina is uh, close to our family. Uh, Katarina came into our family fold in uh, 1952. And the relationship my grandfather had with Frenchy Katarina, actually the name, it's named after the gentleman who had it before us. Uh, they used to um, irrigate. And then when they were down by Sonoma Creek, one was on one side of the creek and Katarina is on the opposite side of our home ranch. And Victorio, my grandfather, and Frenchie used to talk all the time. And Frenchie and him developed the friendship. And they talked briefly about what they would do in the future. And Frenchie had no heirs that really wanted to continue the farm. And he made an agreement with my grandfather and said, if I ever sell it, Mike, I'll sell it to you. And the time came one day, and uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to acquire the Katarina Ranch, which has just been a wonderful place to grow Chardonnays. That's it, yes, and that actually ties really well in our history. For those who have been to the Terrace in Sonoma, who has, if you haven't been, you got to come and see our wonderful tour. And you can come out in this vineyard and you can prune. We actually make, make, allow you to harvest if you go the right time of year. But the reason why Frenchie was, saw my grandfather, he knew he had four kids. And our grandfather used to always said, as every kid, he needed a ranch. And so I think at the time he was right, as Frenchie was ready to sell that, at that time, like our grand, our grandfather had four kids, and he needed more work for them to do, so he, he purchased the, the pear orchard. So, but as I t alluded to earlier, Katarina twenty, our first release was in two thousand sixteen of San Giacomo, and every year we've added different um, skews, different vineyards, as I noted earlier, just to really for our club familiar members, most importantly, to understand our vineyards, get more access to the terroir. So in twenty twenty, we said, James, we got this amazing vineyard you haven't worked with yet mm -hmm. uh, one of the few james have been working with, working for 20 <laughs> this is his 20th year working with our family so yeah. cheers to that we can drink yeah. we can drink cheers. early that's a cheers so so we said we have this amazing vineyard katarina it's in a clone it's actually a clone that we had not worked with so most of our vineyards uh wines are all old wenty clone with some dijon and this is a clone for katarina clone and it's actually the only vineyard we have that actually uh, a clone was named after it. and it was a it was a field selection that many of our winemaker winery partners um, have gotten for years and so as we develop new SKUs it's like important for us to make a Katarina clone vineyard uh, yeah. bottle yeah. and so yeah. James we came to him and James was all in and so maybe James talk about like your as we kind of approach you with this new SKU new vineyard yeah. and kind of we kind of Maybe you give us the like behind the scenes of how we <laughs> what, what what was the approach of this wine? Thinking? Yeah, so you know the beauty of working with the San Giacomos on all the different sites and vineyards uh, that we have pretty much behind us, um, including Roberts Road to the north, uh, is that the site, especially in Chardonnay, the site really lends itself to the style. So here with with Caterina, it lends naturally lends itself to a much bigger kind of rounder richer um kind of deeper more concentrated chardonnay um let's just say this one's a little bit heightened in the uh um mouthfeel the mouthfeel and the impact of uh, chardonnay this is a great kind of 
food Chardonnay. I mean, because it's really going to cut all the, you know, the fats and the sugars and everything in your in your foods for the upcoming holiday season. So Did I say you can have this with turkey? Turkey. You can absolutely and, have this with turkey. There's a one ravioli, Ita Italians ravioli. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This would actually hold up to meat. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's where I was going with it. Yeah. yeah, and of course we've got crab season coming up. So what better? I mean, this, this and crab, lobster. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm, yeah. Let's taste it. Let me, oh, let's, yeah. let's talk. Let's talk about. So it this is this has got great kind of aromatics of pear and great baking spice, um, but the body, very um, kind of classic. Uh, clone four attributes in kind of a cooler climate site, um, you know, rose petal, um, pear, a little bit of green apple. Um, but I really like the spice component to this, which I think is perfect for the holidays, of course, and all the foods that we consume during that time. Yeah, it's gonna go great. Okay, next wine we're gonna taste is the 2022 Robert Toad Five Clone Pinot Noir. So this is, everyone I'm sure out there knows our Roberts Road Vineyard. Uh, it's one of our iconic vineyard. Our family's farm for over 30 years. It's actually where we met our yeah. winemaker, James McPhail. Well, not, not that 20 years ago. Yeah. Oh, it was a 20, long time ago anyway. Yeah. So with that, uh, we've been doing Roberts Road Vineyard designates since our, start, our initial vintage in 2016. We have over 20 wineries that actually do Roberts Road Vineyard designates as well. So it's a wine vineyard that we work with multiple clones. Uh, James has fermented them beautifully separately and brought them all together. Well, in 2021, we decided, what if we put all five of them and fermented the, fermented them together? And James was kind of like, a, hey, let's, this is something I think James has dreamt, dreamt of. We as Mike and I have dreamt of, and it created this masterpiece. And it's like something that the 21 turned on like, we should do this every year. Yeah. So with this, you have the 2022 iteration that's available in your winter release. And with that, I think it's important for us to step back a little bit and understand like what does Roberts Road, uh, we hear it all the time, like, you know, it has an amazing brand with all our consumers and we get that. Like, tell me about Roberts Road. So Mike, maybe let's give our Club Familiar members a little snapshot on, you know, remind them of why Roberts Road is so special to our, to our family. Right. Well, for the second generation, it was a, shortly a vineyard that uh, we got to see from the ground up, you know. Um, but let's back up a little bit. We came to know Salabras Road because my dad had a good friend who was a neighbor there. And he said, and you got to come over and look at this piece of property that's for sale. And my dad was a little lukewarm on that area because it hadn't been proven. It was a pretty cool site. So reluctantly, my dad went over there and uh, met with him to be polite. And then he was driving around. He's looking. I was like, wow, this is this actually could turn out to be something pretty special. Uh, it was located alongside... Um, Copeland Creek and Copeland Creek over the years had meandered and left a lot of kind of silt and clay and cobbled stone and it wasn't kind of the heavier clays that we were expecting to see. So from that point we did some soil tests. We we're really pleased to see what the results. Uh, and then like I said, it, you know, it was special to Steve and my brother and my brother-in-law and my sister because we got a chance actually to, to be in on the ground floor to pick the clones and pick the rootstocks and the spacings and the row orientation. So we feel very close to that one because that one we were there at the very beginning unlike the other vineyards where we kind of grew up where they were already established yeah i like to say that was our test i think that was a, a test that our dad uncles and aunt um he found the site uh, which was you know as michael did to with his relationship but as far as development he's like all right let's see what these boys and what my daughter can do with this amazing site and sure enough uh we developed it and then we ran into james in 2003 right james? yeah 2003, 2003. Yeah. uh he was a second the second winery to get food off of that vineyard. Mm -hmm. And we established this wonderful relationship and you know, James has worked with this vineyard for, for all, from his infancy. It's like one of your kids, right? Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's your son, right? You, know, you have two daughters, right. you have two daughters, maybe this is your, your son. So, uh, but no, t tell us about um, the five clone and just obviously your history with Robert Trode and kind of how this wine, um, your vision behind it. Yeah, this is so, you know, it's very, uh, it's rare for a winemaker to be able to uh, be a part of a vineyard for this long. You know, this is, this is kind of a dream or kind of, you know, really kind of a bucket list item for me as a winemaker to be able to really get to know a vineyard. And so after 20 years of walking it, gone through a few pairs of boots, um, you know, this is, 
to have some clones in here that um, I used back in the in the old days, like 20 years ago. Uh, but to put them all together is is very unique. So for you that uh, for those of you that have, of course, experienced the Roberts Road, uh, that is typically from vintage to vintage a um, barrel selection um, by block and by clone. So it changes a little bit each year. Whereas the beauty of this wine is the perfect expression of Roberts Road by vintage, which is really neat because as we build this up, we'll be able to go back and kind of see that historical build of, of all five clones in one site. Um, and it's, it's a great expression. I've always talked about how Roberts Road is so near and dear to my heart because it, it's, as a lover of Pinot Noir, back to checking all those boxes, this checks all those boxes. It's got earth, it's got fruit, uh, it's got all the components that, um, you know, Pinot lovers look for and want. Uh, it's all in one bottle. <laughs> so I think James touched on it. So this is, you all had the Robert Schroed Vineyard expression. So this yeah. five clone is you, it's all. So how would you, how is this different? So if I'm a club family member and I have Robert Schroed, pretty soon you're gonna get a 22 in your cellar very soon. And then the 22 Robert Schroed will be released uh, soon as well. So they're going to have two. How would you distinguish between the two? The biggest dis um, distinguisher is going to be the selection of clones. So um, with the Roberts Road having um, it kind of change a little bit each year, you know, with, okay, well, one year maybe there's going to be a little bit more swan because it, you know, kind of fills a hole in the wine that, you know, that we're looking for. Or, um, you know, we don't typically work with Pomard. Mm -hmm. You know, which a pomard from that site uh, is a little bit more earth driven, um, lends that to this wine. Uh, so it's, it's the expression of this wine is going to be um, kind of both worlds of kind of earth and fruit. Um, this one, the 2022, which I think is the first time I've tasted it in a, in a, in a yeah, while. In a while. In a while, um, since I maybe bottled it. Um, it's really surprising me with its um, approachability right now too. I, this is a Pinot Noir that when you get it, you could open it. It's gonna age well, but it's also gonna go really well with your holiday feast. So that is actually a great transition because my next question, are you reading my notes over here? Is that how you know my next question? <laughs> so um, with the 22, so we've tasked James with this wine. Um, it's always the first release of that vintage so it's always an opportunity for consumers our co family members to really get active what is the 2022 vintage going to taste like so this is a first first representation of it and it's off to a flying start as yeah, we're tasting right now so with that you know i've had consumers it's always like when you get the first 20 release of vintage like is it too early should i age it so obviously you make your you do an amazing job of making wines to age which we will be tasting here very soon of how ageable our wines are. But we talked about why is it so also check the box of being ready to drink right now. Part of that has to do with the vintage. And I think the vintage was kind of one of those perfect vintages where it was kind of a, it was a, a mild, you know, kind of a mild summer. Uh, it just, it gave us fruit um, that wasn't, you know, um, we didn't have to work that hard with it, you know. It was it just kind of gave it to us um, on a plate and said, "Here's kind of softer tannins, mm -hmm. uh, more approachability." Um, and I think it just, you know, you never really know uh, until you know you make the wine and it's aging, and you get it ready, you know, bottle ready. Do you know that it's going to be a little bit, you know, more approachable out of the gate? Yeah, and that's also with you know again. I know my cellar gets full quickly, so I'm always looking like, what, how can I, you know, what wines can I drink a little early? I mean, of course, yeah. buy a couple, right? Or buy Absolutely. four or six, so you can have a couple early, a couple late, later. But this is what, again, this is only the second um, vintage of this wine, and it's always impressed me with how it's, how it's aged um, to the point where, but it's also, it's so ready. I mean, this is, has only been a tasting room exclusive wine. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is the first time we're putting it into a club shipment uh, for Club Familiar members. So it's a great opportunity for you guys to put it on the table, um, open one early. Yeah. 
for one Absolutely. of the st stash ones yep. or later. Um, but with that, I hope you guys enjoy it. Now we're here for the library segment of our tasting here with our Club Familiar members. And this is something that I know we're all just excited. Um, one, we get to taste the 16 Green Acres Shard, 2017 Robert's Road Pinot Noir, and our 2018 Sonoma Coast Pinot Noir. So this is amazing because I don't even think, Mike, you and I have many of these wines left in our cellar. Uh, so those of you that have some left in your cellar are very fortunate. And it's a good opportunity, opportunity for us to reflect. So 2016 Green Acres, that was the first vintage we ever made. So it's a vintage obviously that's very monumental to our, for our family, like transitioning to making wine. And just opportunity for us to really make wines with the, the partnership with James McPhail, our winemaker really for consumers to see our expression of our grapes in the wine glass. And so it's something that, um, it's a wine that Green Acres was at the top of the list uh, with all our vineyards we farm, Green Acres number one. Uh, so Mike, let's talk about like when we were going through like what, what vineyards we're we gonna source from for our inaugural vintage. Like why was Green Acres at the top? Well, our first vintage has gotta come from our first vineyard ever been planted. There you go. So, um, yeah, well, it was a no brainer. Green Acres obviously is very close to our hearts because it was our very first planting of wine grapes. And uh, it's located between Sonoma, Fowler, and Roger Creek. It's got beautiful clay loam series. Uh, it has just been a great fit for Chardonnay over the years. And so many of our winery clients have had made some fantastic wines. So it was kind of a no-brainer. Like, we are definitely going there first to make some yeah. great wines. Right at the top of the list. So James, 2016, first vintage yeah. you've ever first made vintage. from Green Acres. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about it. Wow, when we poured this, so I haven't had this in a while, but when we first poured it, I was like, wow, this is still like a very kind of, you know, the golden hue, uh, the original colors it was in the, you know, in the beginning. But I think what surprises me with this wine, um, it's really reaching its peak, but it can last even a little bit longer. Great natural acidity in this wine, which Green Acres has always had, a very, you know, nice natural acidity, um, but no, secondary no tertiary characteristics in this wine yet which is really kind of cool to to have a seven eight year old chardonnay tasting like this and i think as we go through the next two wines we'll talk on a touch on it but i think it's really important right to drink wines in their peak um mm -hmm. i don't think it's like right now i mean of, of course the wines age and lay some down drink some right away just because you get that snapshot of and just compare right yeah but absolutely. i think these wines as we'll taste are in their peak there's no it's, reason there's no reason to hold them longer. My the reason I say that because you run the risk of like next year it may be past the peak. With that, let's transition to the next wine, the 17, 2017 Roberts Road Pinot Noir. So the Roberts Road, uh, as you we talked about um, earlier, you know, first vineyard we planted um, the northern part of Pelham Gap, and I think it's a wine. If you go back to 17 vintage, um, you know, and I think this is what we talked a little about. It kind of, I remember this wine first was released, James. It was. It kind of was like got off like it was. I kept it. It needs time. That, that, time, that yeah. was yeah. that was the one first re, re, the note from this. I didn't even get a. I remember it, like I didn't even get a a, a a note from you. It was like I think you sent it to our team. Like <laughs> it needs time. That's all you said. So now it's been yeah. six yeah. years since six then. Years, so what do you think now? Just, well, I think it's just starting to come into its own. It's it's showing beautifully. Aromatics, um, flavor profile. This still has a ways to go, but a perfect time to open it. Uh, it is just beautiful aromatics of, of kind of earth and a little bit of a little bit of that mushroom in that in that earth component, I think. Um, but great kind of cherry, uh, plum, uh, kind of the, some of the black fruits, darker fruits in here. Um, again, I I love Roberts Road. It's just again, it just you know, it's such a such a breadth. Of, of experiences in this class so this is like classic Roberts I think you said yeah. it earlier about describing the five plum which is amazing that the consistency that Robert sort of transcends from we all of our other producers and even from different like iterations of it it's you get the earthiness but the fruit, yeah, fruit. in mouth yeah. you get earthiness yeah. and you get that California bright Fruit layers, and then yep. you get the the, the right, velvety, the, fruits, the, but it's, yeah, velvet, it's the velvet, the velvety yeah. finish. So yeah, it's really softened too. So it's a again, it's a great time to, to crack this bottle. All right, we're going to move on to the 18 Sonoma Coast Pinot Noir. So the 18 Sonoma Coast. 
Pinot Noir is like our flagship Pinot Noir. Um, one, because um, it's made in a style that James can talk to a little bit that really is, we want it approachable early, we want it drinkable a little later and then drinkable really later, right? So yeah. and it's also a, a skew that is the, our, our biggest, our most uh, highly produced skew, skew. So it's more available to our consumers. Or, and so with that, um, I think it's important for this wine to age, mm. right? Because mm -hmm. it's, you know, people are going to have it in different, you know, uh, maybe out on the road, they're going to have it in our tasting room. We still do library tastings occasionally of it. Um, so with that, people can come and really understand, you know, what is, what, what is the 18 vintage? It's always a snapshot of like each vintage, uh, yeah. because we probably have the more library wines of this, um, than some of the single vintage skews. So like, what do you, when you taste this, James, what did, what does it tell you about the 2018 vintage? So 18 was, this is a kind of a big expression of, um, of Pinot Noir. Um, 18 was, um, there was just little, very little frost image, if, if any, you know, it was, it was a very kind of mild um, summer as well, very long growing season. Uh, I remember kind of starting a little bit later, not as late as this year. Uh, but it was a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, and so that, you know, resulted in a little bit longer hang time. When I first um, put my nose into this glass, I was uh, surprised at how fragrant it is. It's really very typical of the 18 vintage. It was very fragrant, bright, um, kind of heightened um, aromatics and flavors, uh, but classic. This is a blend of uh, Roberts Road, um, Frederick, and Amaral. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's also kind of in its spot right now. It's in its place. You know, even going back, we just had 18 Sonoma Coast. Our 18 Sonoma Coast Chardonnay won the wine, Press Democrat Wine Challenge, best wine of all of Sonoma County. So, but what do you remember about the 18 Vintage? 18 had a lot of scares, you know, weather-wise and stuff. We talked about the rain, a little bit of heat and stuff. Um, we just had, usually when you have a, a heat event or a rain event, it's the weather that follows it that is the most important, especially with the rains and stuff. And we got some dry winds afterward that dried things out, got the soil crusted off of the top, so you don't have a lot of humidity. So, um, you know, it, it was one of those things where we were, we were right on the knife's edge, but we, um, <laughs> we came we made on the it. good side. And the wines are, yeah. the wines are great. Yeah. So, well, that concludes our library tasting, and we're so excited to be able to bring these wines to you and kind of taste through them. Um, we need to do this more often. You're gonna have a lot more, you're gonna hear from all three of us more than um, you would probably like because we're gonna be tasting a lot. We have lots of library. That's the most wonderful thing. Every vintage we have, we have more library wines to showcase to really just see how our wines progress through the years. So all, our, all these library wines are available from today's tasting will be linked below in the show notes. We still have Magnum's available, which is so great, and we didn't even get into the Magnum talk about oh, aren't yeah. Magnum's the best? Tell now, us quick, holidays. give them, give them, give them yeah. the thirty. Why are Magnum's the best? Well, because they 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 age a little bit slower than a seven fifty, so right, more volume to surface space, so it's just a little bit slower aging. So if you open up a seven fifty and you absolutely love it, maybe it's at its height, you know that that Magnum has still got you know more life to it, and. and more wine. It's more wine. Yeah. yeah. More wine for everybody. And we make lots of magnums, which yeah. is great. Jazz one James is like make Love lots magnums. of magnums at age. So with that, we we've enjoyed today's tasting with you. Cheers, grab yeah, your cheers. grab your favorite wine. Wait, wait, yeah, which was I'm going with the sixteen. I'm going I'm going to the seventeen Robert Pino. Yeah. So cheers. 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 Yeah. Cheers. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Cheers you guys.